several of my tanks have gotten into this this sort of sweet spot where they're they're really kind of bulletproof, just very very stable, and I feel very comfortable about putting anything in there and know that it's actually going to live and thrive and do well. And uh, I want to get into the five the five reasons why I think I have these rock solid, stable aquariums that are very very uh, conducive to to healthy fish. Let's get into it. Point number one is oxygen. There's a tremendous amount of surface tension breakup from the outputs of both the sump, return pump, and also there's some from, from the return on a canister filter. You can see the input, that pre-filter back there, that's for a Sunsum 704B. So lots of oxygen, which is not just for the fish, but helps with the growth of beneficial bacteria. And talking about beneficial bacteria, point number two is a substrate, in this case, river rock, but underneath this river rock is a very deep substrate of sand. And that sand is never messed with it's pretty much left alone. I vacuum the river rock and um, vacuum out the, the detritus and the waste from the river rock. Otherwise, the sand below it has created a type of, of uh, filter media, if you will, right? A beneficial bacteria media that is very, very stable and houses a lot of beneficial bacteria and is really sort of the backbone of the aquarium. Another point is water movement. Water movement that actually will lift waste and detritus from the substrate and get it over to the intakes of the filters. In my case, I have a 3500 gallon per hour wave maker here on the side pointed downward and it will actually turn on on a timer for several hours every day. I don't want it on all the time because some of these fish are very wide and flat and a lot of water movement would push them around which can be very uncomfortable for them. But I think water movement and really allowing the uh, the waste to get get to the intakes is also important. Filtration has to be on the list and that puts us at what? Number four. Filtration and also redundancy in filtration so that if something is going on with one filter another filter can carry the load and there's adequate filtration and not too much. You know I don't adhere to that idea that you can't over filter an aquarium. I do believe that I do believe that you can uh, overkill and have unnecessary uh, waste of, of uh, energy. Instead, adequate filtration, which depending on the fish, if it's a fish that produces a lot of waste like cichlids do, you might want to be on the higher end of this, but turn over your aquarium about five to 10 times an hour. Keeping in mind that once you stuff your filters with, with uh, filter material, right, your, your bio balls, your sponges, whatever you're using, it's going to slow down the factory, what the factory is telling you, the gallons per hour, what the gallons per hour are rated at is actually going to be slower once the water has to go through filter media. But, you know, stay in that sweet spot of five to ten times per hour and you'll be, you'll be in great shape. And probably the last point, and, and, and quite possibly the most important point, is time. Time, and that goes hand in hand with patience. Really allowing a tank to mature, allowing that, that bacteria to really take hold in the substrate without messing with it, allowing the sponges and beneficial bacteria media in your filters to become very well seeded by 
not messing with them too much. Just letting time do its thing and being patient with it, not messing with it too much. And eventually you'll have a just a rock solid situation that is less stressful to the fish because it's it's providing them with a living water that they can thrive in. And I believe that is the case in my tanks currently. They've all been set up and established for over two years. And what I'm telling you also applies to the 300 gallon, 300 gallon African cichlid tank, which, which has some pretty deep substrate as you get to the back of the aquarium. There's also an FX, an FX6 on this tank. You can see the uh, intake pre-filter back there, but also a sump. Both of my large tanks have a sump. That extra water volume doesn't hurt. But again, lots of surface tension breakup, so lots of oxygen, lots of water movement. In the case of this tank, I have a small little wave maker back there that is just hitting this one spot at the bottom of that plant which was a dead zone so it's it's uh, moving that detritus out towards the filter intakes I hardly ever have to clean this sand because there is so much movement in this aquarium and these fish are also always sifting it so those are the five points with the most important one being time and patience when you set up an aquarium, don't get uh, over anxious. Don't want everything immediately. It will take some time for things to get established. But if you are patient, eventually you'll have a nice, stable, rock solid situation that is conducive to your fish breeding and getting colorful, living a good long life, and just showing great color and all that good stuff. If you like this channel, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, consider subscribing, hit that bell for notifications. Join me on Saturday for the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. A lot of fun with a great group of fish keepers every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. And if you'd like to support the channel further, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. It starts for as little as $3 a month. Details are under the video and you can be a member of the Garage Gang. Thank you for tuning in, my friends. You are the best. Bye-bye.